Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Jermaine just coming at you with a video for this afternoon. Um, just coming at you with a video for this afternoon, um, going through what we're going to be doing. So today um, is this afternoon's work is really much like a mirror of what we did in class today. So everything that we are doing this afternoon, we've done an example or two that are the same in class today. So it's pretty cool in that way. So if we um, we can always be referring back to what we did on the slides above, but let's take a look at each one of these slides, starting with number nine. So starting with number nine, it asks us to write an equation and solving, right? So it's writing equations and solving. If you refer back up to the top, um, slide number three and four, we're doing the exact same thing, but with a different hanger. So it says this picture represents a hanger that is balanced because the weight on each side is the same. Circles weigh two triangles, two, and triangles weigh three. Um, so that's just information that we need to know. Um, find the weight of the pentagon. And when I say the pentagon, I mean the square. Find the weight of the square, S-Q-U-A-R-E. So your job is to find the weight of the square on this guy. We know that triangles weigh two, um, it, uh, the, 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 the circles weigh the circles weigh two and the triangles weigh three. So first thing that we need to do is we need to, the first thing that we need to do here is we need to write an equation for this hanger. And if we look at this guy, there are a few things that like terms on each side that we can cancel out, right? So if we look at this guy, we have two tri two squares here and two squares here. So if I do that, then I can actually take this X and X out those two squares on each side. I cross out two on each side because we want to keep it balanced. And the only way that we keep it balanced is by doing the same thing we do to one side that we do to the other side. Okay. So now I'm good with that. Right. And then I have here, I can cross out, I can maybe cross out. I'm not going to cross out any of these triangles because I want to keep it a little bit actually we'll cross out two of these triangles. Right. So we'll cross out two triangles on the left side and have the rest of the triangles on the left, right? So now we can write an equation based on this simplified hanger, okay? So if we write an equation based on this simplified hanger, I want you to take a minute and fill in some of these pieces of information here. So um, for example, we know that, um, let me just, right? So we know from the story above that triangles weigh three. So take a minute and label all of your different shapes here. So take one minute right here. I'll put that on the timer and then come back and let's talk about it. Wonderful, we're taking another 12. Here we go, let's come back together. Okay, so I know that each of these triangles is worth three. So in these text boxes, I write three for each one of these triangles. The left side of this equation, if I add up my triangles, I have three plus three is three plus three is six plus three more is nine plus three more is 12. So 12 is going to be equal to is going to be equal to I have two squares on the other side and we don't know how much the squares are worth. So we call those or label those as X. I have two of those guys. So I have two X. And now that's my equation. 
Now I need to use this equation here to find the weight of the one square, which means solve this equation for x. So if I come down here and I say 12, x, 12 is equal to 2x, I want you to take one minute right now to solve this guy for x. Remember to use your inverse operation to get your x by itself. So we are going to get on here um, to get this x by itself. This is attached through multiplication. So to each side, we're going to need to divide each side by 2 because this is attached through multiply by 2. So we need to get it by itself by dividing by 2, divide by 2. x is going to be equal to 6 is going to be equal to our x. So 1 squared is... 6 grams. Okay. Very nice job. Now let's take a look at the next piece here. Now we're simply going to be simplifying these hangers. We're going to use the x's to cancel out our pieces that we have here. And we're going to solve for, I mean, write an equation for the hanger. So I have two circles on my left side. I have two circles on my right side that I can cancel out. Okay, so now I want you to use your X, your X is down below, and I want you to cancel out any pieces on the left side and the right side that can be equally canceled out to maintain balance, because we want to make it as simple as possible. Take one minute right now to do that. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. We're taking another five more seconds. Awesome, awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Let's come back together and let's take a look at what we got here. Um, let me just make sure, let me try to turn my camera back on. There we go. Now you can see me again, woohoo! Okay, so um, we are simplifying this equation. So on both sides, I have two pentagons here that I can cancel out. Oh, I didn't cancel out my circles on the other side. So I canceled out my circles. Okay, one second. Order, bring to front. So I canceled out my two circles. On this side, I cancel out the two pentagons on this side. And I cancel out, uh, I have four triangles on the left side. Are there four on the other side to cancel out? No, there aren't. There's only two. So I'm going to cancel out the two triangles on each side. Boom. So I'm left with this piece right here. Now we're going to use this information that we know to figure it out, right? So we said circles weigh three. So all of the circles that remain here, I'm going to label as three. Okay. All of my pentagons weigh two. So then my triangles must weigh how much? Oh 
Oh my gosh, you're right. They weigh X because we don't know what they're what how much they weigh, so we label them as X. Very good. Nice job. So I have my triangle here and I label it X. So now if I want to create an equation based on this guy here, I don't have any numbers on the right side, the left side here. I just have what do we have? I want you to take 20 seconds right now to write the equation for this guy here. Taking another 15, right in the equation for this guy right here. And three, two, and one. Very good. So if we look at this guy, the right, the left side here has two X's. So I'm gonna write that as two X. That's all that's on that side. So then we put our equal sign, okay? From there, we look at the other side. What do we have left on the right side? We have a two and a three. A two and a three combined to how much? Oh my gosh, you're right. Five. Very, very, very good. If I wanted to be a super duper trooper and get this X by itself, find out what my one triangle is worth, what would I have to do to each side? Oh my gosh, you're right. You might have said it like 10 seconds ago, but yes, you have to divide by two because this two is attached through multiplication. So to undo it, get rid of it, we have to divide by two on each side. Very good. So divide by two on each side. I would get an X is equal to five halves, or if you typed it in the calculator, 2.5. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this last slide real quick because I don't know if it recorded. So I just want to take a second to go back and look at the final answer here. So we had this equation right here of 12 equals 2x. I mean, so we, we created this equation of 12 equals 2x by filling in your weights for the triangles, the weights for the squares. Um, and then writing it as an equation of 12, when we add these all together, we get 12 is equal to 2x. Get your x by itself by dividing by 2, divide by 2. 6 is equal to x. 1 square is equal to 6 grams. Boom, doom, there we go. Okay? So for this one here, we had x is equal to 2.5. Boom, boom, boom. Nailed it, nailed it. Crossing out and simplifying our equation. Now, we're looking here like we did in class today. We are naming that move. You're looking from step one to step two, and you're saying, how did I get there? And you need to think to yourself. I want you to think for a minute, and I want you to decide, what did I have to do to each side to get, ooh, I got rid of this guy here, and this 15 got smaller. So that means we're either going to be doing division or subtraction Go. I want you to think. Take one minute to decide what move took me from A from step one to step two here. If you finish early, look at your other two examples as well. There are 10 more seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, so if we look at this guy here, 
I got rid of this three here. So that means we're either going to be, so we're getting rid of it, right? And I don't, it's, I don't know how it's attached, but I know that this 15 is getting smaller, right? And it's going from a negative to a positive. Two things that I know. So if it's getting smaller, that means there's only two operations that it can be. Subtraction, right? And subtraction or division, right? So if I look at this guy here, it's either going to be subtraction or division. If I look at this guy here, am I sub if I subtract, so for example, let's say I have this minus 3x, but this is attached through what operation? This negative 3 is attached to these parentheses through what operation? Oh my gosh, you're right. It's multiplication, right? So to undo, that's what we did here. We didn't distribute here. We actually undid it, right? And it's gone. So the way that we undo this, this multiplication, is by dividing by negative 3. So what's the move that's taking me from step 1 to step 3? Divide by negative 3. And you need to make sure that you put that negative sign here because it sticks with that number. And because we're going from this fifth, negative 15 to a positive 5, we need to divide by a negative because a negative divided by a negative is going to get me a positive. Okay? So now I want you to take 30 seconds right now. If we look at this, our constant or that number by itself, that C, that constant, is the piece that's changing here. So what are we doing to each side of this equation from step one to step two? I want you to take 30 seconds right now to answer that question for me. And stop. Okay. So if we look at this guy here, we said that our constant or that number by itself is going to be is going to be the piece that's changing here. And it's going from 10 to 7, 4 to 1. So it's getting smaller. So we know that it's either going to be subtraction or division. But it's not getting like it's not getting significant. So if we look for like a common difference here, 10 minus what gets me 7? So if you're 10. Take away what gets me 7, 1, 2, 3, right? So if we, we're subtracting 3 on the left side. Now if we look at the right side, if I'm going from 4 to 1, I'm also going to be taking away 3. So from each side, we're going to be subtracting 3. Very good. Nice job. Very, very, very good. Last one here. We're going to take another 30 seconds to tell me what is the move that's going on from step one to step two here. What move is going on from step one to step two and this one? Take 30 seconds right now to do that for yourself. Three, two, and one. Okay, so we talked about this before. When we see parentheses like this, usually I tell you that you need to multiply, right? So this guy, we actually ended up dividing by the three, dividing by the three. This guy here, if we look at it, we got some bigger numbers here. So that means when our numbers get bigger, we're either doing, we're doing one of two things here, right? We are either multiplying and or multiplying or adding right so okay so we're either multiplying or adding so when we're doing this guy here we are actually going to be distributing here which means this is attached through multiplication so to undo that we need to multiply five 
times each of the pieces or terms inside of here, right? 5 times 2x gets me 10x. 5 times 3 gets me 15 is equal to that 4. So what is the, what is the move going on from step 1 to step 2? We're distributing. Distributing, right? Or you could say the distributive property, okay? Awesome, awesome job on that. Before I go any further, I'm throwing my code phrase in at a little bit of a different time today. Code phrase for today, actually it's like a code question. What is your favorite candy? Because mine is definitely M&M's. Send me an email with your favorite candy. Mine is M&M's. I'm probably going to be eating some. Actually, no, because it's kind of gross to eat on camera. But yeah, that is the question. Let's take a look at the last little bit here. We have three equations that we need to solve here. So I'm going to copy this equation down here so that I can solve it for my x. And I need to solve for my x. So that means I need to get this x all by itself. So if I make this a little bit larger for myself, I know to get this x by itself, first, what do I need to do to each side? I, when I'm looking at a two-step equation, I need to undo my addition and subtraction first. So what am I going to do to each side? Oh my gosh, you're right! I have to minus 5 from each side. I need to get this x by itself. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of this plus 5 by minusing 5 on each side. Oh my gosh, you're brilliant. Minus 5 on each side. And remember, once you write that in, you want to highlight this line and underline it so that you know that you are actually going to be subtracting. Okay? So then we come down to this guy below. These guys cancel out. The 5s cancel out. We're left with just a 4. X is equal to 20 minus 5 is going to get us 15. Oh my goodness. Um, 20 4x is equal to 15. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So now I want you to look at what we have left and I want you to tell me what is my next step to get this x by itself. It's attached through some sort of operation. Tell me what I have to do to get that x by itself. Oh my gosh, you're right. Crazy pants. We have to undo that 4 that's attached to our x. And the way that we do that is by, it gets attached through multiplication, if we remember. So the way that we undo that is by, oh my gosh, you're right, dividing by 4 on both sides. Super fantastic. We're going to get an x is equal to, we can write this one of two ways. We could write it as um, 15 divided by 4, which is how I would probably write it. Or we can write it as, um, sorry, Mr. Main, um, 15 divided by 4, if you use your calculator, 3.75. Three point seven five. I would accept both answers for that one. No, okay, that's weird. Fantastic. Now we're looking at this next one here. We need to. Oh goodness, we have this guy here, and we have this one fourth that is attached to him. I have this one fourth that's attached to my x here. And I think that, because we're not dividing by 4, so we're not going to multiply by 4 to get rid of it. Mm -mm. Um, we are going to have to, okay, sorry about that. So we have to first undo this minus here because, ooh, let me try that again. Um, we have to undo this minus 4. Before we can do anything with this 1 fourth x, we need to first undo that minus 4 by adding 4 to each side. Okay, so we're adding 4 to each side. Let me just keep going with this. Um, plus 4. We're going to get a total of our 1 fourth x is equal to, um, I'm going to go, uh, x is equal to 16 plus 4 is 20. And I'm going to make a copy of this 1 fourth x right here. So I'm going to click on this box. I'm going to control copy, control V, and I'm going to put it down here. 
okay? So I have a 1 fourth x is equal to 20. First, I have to undo my addition and subtraction. Now, I need to do something about this fraction of 1 fourth. I need to get rid of it. And remember, we're not going to, because it's attached to multiplication here, you might think that we have to undo it by multiplying or by dividing. That's not going to work because we have a fraction here. Remember, if we think back to those tricks on how we get rid of fractions that are at the front of our variable or our letter, we undo it by multiplying by the r, 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 the r, 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 r. Oh my gosh, you're right, the reciprocal, exactly. And the reciprocal is just a fancy way of saying the flip of that fraction. So what I need you to do right now is in this text box, there is a text box um, that has some boxes or that has some lines around it. And you're going to grab that text box and you're gonna drag it up next to that one fourth and you're gonna click into it. And we're gonna multiply by that reciprocal, which means we gotta flip that fraction, which the reciprocal of one fourth or the flip of one fourth is four over, oh my gosh, you're right, four over one. Four over one, and we make it into a fraction by highlighting that four and underlining it, okay? We can make it a little bit scrunchier, make it a little bit scrunchier, scooch her a little bit closer, Boom. There we go. If I multiply by my one fourth on the left side, what do I have to do on the right side? Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Oh my gosh, you're right. I have to multiply by one by four over one on the other side as well. So you're going to take that text box, you're going to control C, control V, and you're going to multiply the other side by it as well. So we have 20, um, times four over one. We're gonna be left with, I'm gonna enter down a few. The X's cancel, the one fourth and the fourth, the four cancel out to be just an X on the left is equal to 20 times four, which is equal to two, four, six, eight. Eight with a zero on the end, 80. Oh my goodness, nice job. So now we have this guy here. We have this guy here, and we need to think back to what we did on the first slides. We, on the first slides, we distributed or multiplied this eight out to both of those pieces. So the, what we have to do when we look at this guy here is we need to multiply eight times X, eight times two. I want you to take 30 seconds right now to distribute this on your slides. Wonderful, wonderful, halfway there. Okay, three, two, and one. Let's come back and let's take a look at how do we distribute. So when we have these guys here, this parentheses, we're going to multiply 8 times x to get 8x. Okay? And then 8 times 2, a positive 2, is a positive 16. So we need to write a plus 16 is equal to what was left on that other side. Oh my gosh, you're right! 32. Okay, so now we know how to do this guy. So now we need to get our x by ourself, by itself, right? And we do that by undoing first our addition and subtraction. So how do I undo this addition or subtraction in this equation? Oh my gosh, you're right. You have to subtract 16 on each side. Very good. Oh my goodness. Fierce. So when I subtract my 16 on each side, I can underline it to show me that we are doing that operation, right? And we're left with just an 8x is equal to, oh goodness, 32 minus 16. I got to get a calculator to help me with this one. 32 minus 16 equals 
Oh my goodness, 16. So 8x is going to be equal to 16. Okay? Then, how do I get my x by itself now? What's my next step? If this is attached through multiplication, so what do I have to do to each side? Oh my gosh, you're right! I have to undo it by dividing by 8. Look at you, you are a fierce one today. Divide by 8, divide by 8. Oh my goodness, I'm going to underline it to show we're doing division. Let me go back and undo that because that's a little bit hanky. Um, and when we divide by 8, we get x is equal to 16 divided by 8 is going to get me, oh my gosh, you're right, it's going to get me 2. Oh my goodness, we're pros today, aren't we? It equals 2. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we got our three solutions here. X is equal to 3.75, X is equal to 80, and X is equal to 2. If you need to cop pause and copy down that work, you can. Now, here comes the last bit. Oh my goodness. This is probably my favorite part. This is the part that I'm so excited about. Okay. So now, you are making your own hanger diagram, and you are going to write an equation that matches it. Okay, so I'm going to go through, it says here, I'm going to go through and I'm going to select six. I'm going to, I'm going to come into the class, right? And I'm going to choose five that I like, and we're going to solve them tomorrow. So what I want you to do is you can use these shapes right here, add them and make your own hanger diagram. Oh my goodness. And you can decide how much is each one worth, right? You can say like you have a square and you have like, two circles. Actually, I don't want to do that because it's going to take all of them. Take all of them and then, yeah. Oh my gosh. I want you to make your own hanger diagram and write an equation that matches it. Okay. Awesome job, guys. I'm so excited to take a look at these. We're going to solve five of them tomorrow. Please do not forget to send me an email with that code phrase that we talked about in the middle. I'm not going to say it again because I want to make sure that everybody was watching, but please send me the email. Okay. Make sure you submit your work and have a fan fantastic day. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.